if there's one thing that has come out of the Al Jazeera documentary is that the country has been severely paralyzed. There are two groups, two emerging groups. On the one side, we have the group that is rallying behind sanctions, sanctions, sanctions. And then on the other, we have a group that is looking at corruption, corruption, corruption. There are quite a number of uh, uh, handles on Twitter that are solely focused on rebutting the, the documentary, trying to discredit by any means necessary. And that's part of the reason why I began the work that I'm doing. Mm. There were lies about Zimbabwean sanctions for 20 years. No one addressed it. Yeah. No one took it on. I was the very first person. My perception of the document was it was gossip. Um, it was a story that was trying to create an impression that the Zimbabwean government is involved in some form of um, looting of gold of Zimbabwe. Mm. That is the impression that we got when the um, highlights came out. Okay. And the highlights came out two, three weeks ago. Okay. They gave the impression that the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe is a money laundering machine in Southern Africa. Sure. But when I watched the documentary, I never saw that. What I heard from Al Jazeera itself and its own narrative, yeah. Zimbabwe is under sanctions. Because Zimbabwe is under sanctions, it cannot trade its gold. No, that is not correct. Uh, the sanctions are targeted against individuals who have been uh, abusing their state power, um, rigging elections, killing people. Uh, in fact, the central bank, uh, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, issued a statement three weeks ago saying that it is not under sanctions as a bank and also saying that... Uh, Gold from Zimbabwe is not under any form of sanctions. In Zimbabwe, the law says the central bank is the sole uh, buyer for the gold. And so it's not sanctioned. So it's not true that uh, sanctions will be uh, forcing people to smuggle. This is just uh, ordinary criminality, which is powered by political uh, elites uh, and their surrogates. The levels of corruption uh, on steroids, um, the massive looting of public funds, uh, and, and the plan of the country's natural resources. So corruption is there. And it, it, how is it manifesting? It is manifesting through, um, for example, the illegal, illicit flaws of uh, minerals. Well, to be, to be frank, the, the two episodes that have been flighted by Al Jazeera so far have really not had anything that we weren't aware of. I mean, it's fairly well known uh, that a, a high proportion, 70% of the gold marketed in Zimbabwe is smuggled across our borders. And the cigarette, smoking, sm uh, cigarette trading activities, smuggling activities of um, the two Rudlin boys is also a well-known feature of, of regional economics, if I can call it that. Uh, I think, the, I think the, the, the shocking point of the whole um, story for me has been the allegations about the involvement of the monetary authorities in Zimbabwe and the fact that this is money laundering on a fairly large scale um, and it, it might in influence the international authorities. We've just been taken off the grey list. Uh, South Africa has just been put on the grey list uh, because they thought that we had improved the way we were managing our foreign exchange flows and trade flows. And uh, this is a uh, very damaging from that point of view. I think the issue is uh, one of the advisors to the government mentioned is, is, is the issue of illicit flaws is quite known, not just known to the general public, known to government, known to parliamentarians, is known to um, the enforcement authorities. It is a known practice. But what remains amiss is uh, the action that is being taken. Transparency International reckon we've lost 100 billion US dollars since independence 42 years ago. That's more than $2 billion a year. Um, I think the losses through this kind of activity run to many billions of dollars. Uh, but look at, look at the Gupta scandal in South Africa. I mean, <laughs> my goodness gracious, the scale of that and the audacity, um, you know, it's, it's just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And I think the world gold community is moving towards a time when they're going to ban such gold movements, similar to the blood diamond industry. Mm. Uh, so I think it's, it, it, it's very serious. Um, none of us at, at, in Zimbabwe are, are, are saying it isn't. Um, the question is what to do about it and how to regularize the situation.
what we definitely know definitely is that um, from from what we've picked from observing from listening to so far episode one and episode two there are some serious government issues um, that in a normal uh, operating government by now you would have a lot of people being arraigned before the courts not necessarily based on a documentary but at least there will be a commitment from the government to try and investigate and situate um, the malpractices. Well, I can tell you that uh, the so-called um, pastor, the, 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 the guy who claimed to be a Christian, a Christian pastor, has been stripped of his diplomatic passport. In fact, he's had his passport removed from him, and uh, the president has stripped him of all, all, all uh, status. Our father is opposed. We will go and pray. No, the Bible never says go and pray. In the Bible, look at Phineas. Phineas saw somebody bringing the committing prostitute. promiscuity and he took a knife. And others were kneeling down praying and he took a knife. Aye. <laughs> My name is Hubert Angel. I stand on this way that I've just given. Uh, he might, in fact, fail jail time. Um, I know that uh, one of the big white uh, gold traders has fled the country uh, with his family. And I would imagine that there will be other elements inside that story against which action will be taken. Hello, my name is Ricky Doolan, and I'm a proud British man. I'm also a businessman, and as any businessman, I represent my interests. I want to say this to you. I love Zimbabwe. It's dear to my heart as a nation and as a people. But I am a British businessman, and I don't apologize for being that. However, I'm so disappointed that a good man who is passionate about Zimbabwe is being penalized by imperialist-funded affiliates of Al Jazeera, simply for trying hard to help fellow Zimbabweans. Firstly, I want to lay some facts down. Fact, fake news media is rife and it's so active that you can never believe a narrative that mainstream media is pushing, especially one that is state funded like Al Jazeera. Another fact, the documentary that's circulating right now is brutally edited to portray a false narrative. I'm not a gold dealer and I never have been. So what they're pushing is a false narrative. Another fact, these fake journalists, business people, they approached me with the now known to be a false proposal, of course, of building a $1.2 billion hotel in Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe, which would have been an outstanding achievement for the nation and its people, whilst it would have also lined up with Ambassador Angel's mandate of increasing the brand of Zimbabwe. They are presenting this documentary like it's a secret investigation, yet it wasn't a secret investigation i know it and the other people involved also know this yes they placed cameras in certain angles that made it look like it was without our knowledge but there was a prior conversation minutes before where we talked about them filming a few minutes of our conversation to tell their bosses and show their bosses this was a legitimate negotiation taking place so we so this is why call decoys were used the first lady as the first lady and Henrietta. These, the intelligence supplied before we got into the negotiation period. And why would they do this, you might ask? It's simple, it's a simple play. It's because the people that were coming to do the negotiations were in doubt. There was doubt that they were legitimately who they said they were. So that needed to be done to test if they were legitimate on this. And they came across genuine to me. But of course, Ambassador believed the intelligence reports. Zimbabwe, you've been wrongfully given painful sanctions. They want to control where and who you sell your gold to and the rest of your produce too, and even the price thereof. Please wake up to the reality and the real scam that's taking place here. It's so plain to see. Anyone can hate me all they want based on a lie, but facts literally have no feelings. I love Zimbabwe and I hold it close to my heart and I always will. But 
You know, the, the fundamental problem for African states, can we identify them as just plain African? You know, in, maybe it's a global problem. Uh, this question of corruption and when it takes when it takes root, the Chinese, I think, have the, the right approach. Uh, ch corruption is a criminal offence, and it is subject to the, the, the most severe punishment uh, that's in the book. To date, one might say, reading in between the lines, it almost seems that the government of the day is either too reluctant or complicit in the said corruption.